through in the late or mid nineties, I got free tickets. John, you know how John Cole was always so good at mm -hmm. you know getting people in, you know, getting the, like he says, butts in the seat. Yep. Uh, so we went and I thought, oh my God, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. I kind of like all this. What's happening? This is, you know, my first, you know, really sitting and watching a game at the time. Mm -hmm. And so it it grew from getting those tickets to joining the booster club to well, you know, many years. I had 18 years that I was in the boosters. I ran the club and then I started branched off. And I am so happy to talk about my guest today, somebody that I know for years, I absolutely love, big heart, and mean it, and yes, and um, we're going to talk hockey, an original six fanatic fan of the Chicago Blackhawks, Donald and Jacqueline, I'm calling the DJ, henceforth, is with me, outstanding person, like I said, loves the Blackhawks, we'll talk hockey all day till Sunday, and well, today is Sunday, and yes. uh, talk Fresno Falcons, and talk about thriving, and it's not easy, folks, but thriving with something like MS, with MS, and, and, and so many other things. DJ, how are you, my friend? Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. I am doing well. I am doing well. And um, I'm very good. You look happy and well. Well, I'm trying, you know, like, like, like I said, that's why we keep the camera a little foggy because nobody <laughs> wants to see this. It's like a Monet, right? right? I good don't have far, filter. <laughs> yeah, good from far, but far from good. I mean, people can fall into my wrinkles and never get out. It's scary, but, uh, you know, it, it, hey, for our ages, we're thriving. We're doing well. Yeah. You know, like I, I tell people sometimes, you know, you want to make fun of our ages? Go for it. Ask us how we, yeah, ask us how we made it this time. Yeah. How yeah. are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, doing well, just doing what I- Tell I me about that ambiance. I've, I've never been in your house. I've never seen, I love it. I love the Pac-Man. I love the, the slot machine, uh, and, but I love the pinball machine. Yeah, the, um, well, there's so many more throughout the house. It's crazy. Um, Lee always wanted a slot machine. So mm -hmm. when we finally got our hands on this, you know, he can rig it. So if people mm -hmm. are over and they want to play, you know, depending on if I need allowance money or not, I can rig it to where they don't win any money Good or just play for the heck of it. Right. Actually, with all of them. Mm -hmm. This one is Mrs. Pac-Man and she yeah, has a speed true. chip in it. And with that speed chip, I mm -hmm. can tell you in no matter how many times I played it, if I if it's been a while, it I could get such blisters and calluses because of the speed chip. I mean, you're going mm. just as fast as it, you know, you're trying, you're banging that darn thing. It's mm. insane. Um, this is probably one of two of our last pinball games. Um, we had a, a Zax on. I don't mm. know if you remember which one that was, but it was, yeah. Sure. Like, yeah. Uh, but the one I was used to playing was the tabletop. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a tabletop and it was, it had originally Frogger, but Lee changed it over to a different one. And for life of me, Battleantis is what we moved it to. That's what it was. And I traded it with my neighbor across the street for their cherry headed Conyer. Mm -hmm. They won that battle because that bird was horrifically loud. It, yes. Oh boy, howdy. And so it was kind of sad because I enjoyed that. That we had, um, a stand-up, the Zaxxon, like I said, um, mm -hmm. when Alex, Todd, and Brad Booth had their um, their apartments during the Falcon year, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, I kept on, you know, come play, take them, whatever. Right. Well, they did. They, they took that Zaxxon and they lugged it to their house up into the apartments. I don't know whatever happened to it. All I know is it didn't come back here. Right. So it's okay. Yes. Because after a while, we collect so many. <laughs> well, that's great. So how did you fall in love with hockey? It was weird how I found out. It was long after my grandfather passed away. 
um, growing up in Orange County, I always loved the Dodgers and the Angels. Um, sure. You know, um, never really thought too much about hockey because to me, hockey is, you know, not a California, you know, mm -hmm. sport. But then we're talking 50 years ago. You know? right, right. So, you know, things have changed drastically. Um, come to find out, I acquired this picture of my grandfather and um, this hockey player, and I could not figure out. Oh, I don't think you could see it that well, but he's over there. Yeah, I'm looking at it, yeah. Um, I didn't know who number 10 was. Now, this mm -hmm. story gets, this story is very interesting. Love um, it. Through, in the late or mid 90s, I got free tickets. John, you know how John Toll was always so good at, mm -hmm. you know, getting people in, you know, getting, like he says, butts in the seat. Yep. Uh, so we went and I thought, oh my God, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. I kind of like all this. What's happening? This is, you know, my first, you know, really sitting and watching a game at the time. Mm -hmm. And so it, it grew from getting those tickets to joining the booster club to, well, you know, many years. I had 18 years that I was in the boosters. I ran the club and then I started branched off. And I, I want to stop you there, people, just to catch up. <laughs> Fresno Falcons, I did a documentary with the help of so many wonderful people about them. Uh, and um, DJ was a key element of the Booster Club for 18 years. Talk about that whole thing and that experience and what that's like so people know. Because it was not a junior hockey team. It was a standalone professional hockey team because hockey, NHL hockey, was not out here. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, you were there when it was really formulating and starting and thriving. Yeah, it was, it, it was, and I guess probably still to this day, because I know I've taken friends to Falcon games. I've taken friends to monster games. And mm -hmm. it always seems that the women get more, the ones that have never gone or maybe have gone once or twice. Mm -hmm. it, and it, it kind of holds true that it's like the fastest growing sport for women to catch oh, yeah. on to. And mm -hmm and become fanatics over, right? Because it, it's at a pace where you could keep up once you would start understanding what the plays are, you know? Mm -hmm. So it just grew from knowing that I, I don't care what goes on on the weekends. I wanna hit those Friday, Saturday and Sunday games that, you know, were always big down at downtown. And from that, uh, met a bunch of people, goodness gracious, the friendliest group of people. Those were the days where you could take your kids and your kids could run around the whole arena and everybody knew everybody's kids. Nothing could happen to these kids. I was just right? saying, and they were safe. Yeah. They were safe. And we were enjoying ourselves and not having to be bothered by the kids saying they were bored or something, you know? So, oh. I mean, it was perfect. It, it was a whole family thing. And so I met Kathy Mattis. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember her. Not. She was um, she was a booster president for a while before I got into it. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined the boosters, made my husband do it, and he doesn't like clubs. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he just he could do without. He'll go to the games, but don't get him involved. Um, but that was too bad. I made him photographer, so he didn't have a choice. Right. Uh, then I started doing. Uh, the, the booster's secretary work, and then I got to vice president. Then after Kathy retired doing it, then I took over and ran and, and did president for mm -hmm. many years. And so um, then I was having some struggles with my MS, so I slowed it down. But the last couple of years that... Um, that I was president, I I did a lot of working doing the office stuff and doing the, the booster club stuff in the Falcons office, both downtown when we were there and when we migrated and moved to the new arena, you know, the offices down there. So I sat down at the reception desk and I helped them. I did booster stuff that, you know, not a problem. Mm -hmm. One day, Matt Thomas, you remember coach, sure. he, he walks in and he goes, Who's that in the picture? And I said, what do you mean? He says, in that picture, who's that man? And I said, well, I don't know who number 10 is, but the guy the guy that in, in the suit, that's my grandfather. He says, well, what's up with the grandfather? How does, how's that happen? 
I said, my grandfather started the booster club of the Chicago Blackhearts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, my grandmother, God bless her heart, she's 90, going to be 99 here pretty soon. She, my aunt told me, she says, well, if you really wanted to know who that guy was in the picture with your grandpa, you should have caught, you should have got her while she was still able to, you know, remember. I said, well, who is he? And the day Matt came back to back into the office, like two days later, he says, DJ, that's Bill Mosienko. And I said, okay. I said, now that you told me who he is later that day, my aunt told me who he was as well. Mm -hmm. I says, I'm going to ask you another question. I said, what award is my grandfather giving him? And he says, well, I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I said, well, I do. I I do, yeah. He got fan favorite. Yeah. So then towards, I don't know, about a year later, and after Matt had already seen it, then Fresno, remember when we got the All-Star game? Sure. When they came? Mm -hmm. Well, Bill Mosienko's grandson Tyler Mm -hmm. was playing in the all-star games well Matt and Mooj did some magic and so I went to the dinner after you know all the all the hoopla was over and my my husband looked at me goes okay don't faint don't say something stupid breathe I'm like what I just want to eat my dinner (laughs) I turn around and I see Matt Mooj walking with this guy. And I'm like, okay, you're getting close. Who is this? And then I fell because there are so many features in Bill's face that were in Tyler's face. And I said, there's no way. And I don't care. Everything that Lee told me not to do, I did. Of course. Uh, That's where the brain works, by the way. Somewhere, and I can't find it. There's the picture that Tyler and I took by the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. so and to this day we keep in touch so oh, that's beautiful that's how my whole hoopla became and my raw raw kind of think i know everything about the black Hawks. i don't but i try you know a lot more than you give yourself credit you do uh, that's i don't know i try <laughs> but that uh tyler went back home after the all-star games mm-hmm. he went back to chicago and he went to his his grandma's and said hey Okay, I found out who this guy was. What's this award? She told him the same thing. And that picture, I don't know if she's still if she's still alive or not, but that picture was still on their mantle every, you know, when Tyler went home. So it was kind of, it was really, it was a full circle, grandparents and then grandkids. It was really kind of neat. Yeah, that's and when you find that happen, you know, it's cosmic, right? It's just you just yeah. feel it. You're like, oh my gosh. So you can say, anybody can say anything bad about the Blackhawks all you want, but I have rich history in it. Well, first of all, I am prejudicial to a fault on the original six, and they're part of the original six. And by the way, the Blackhawks have and forever will have the greatest jerseys. Always. All the sports, not just the NHL, in all the sports. Yep. They just do. Um, Do you preference the, the black, I mean, the white or the red? Well, my the one that I got uh, when I turned 50, my aunt bought Crawford's. Yes. And mailed it to me. His and, real jersey, folks. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And Sweater. So I, that's what I wear. I wear the red one. Yes. Um, I like the red because, you know, I'm, I'm a female. I make messes. I, you know, it covers it up. <laughs> I don't want to have, you know, food stain or whatever on my white jersey. I yeah. got plenty of them from you know, current and past players. But uh, yeah, no, no I'm a, I like the red. And I can't remember the year, but there were a few years, well, I think good a good handful of years where Blackhawks wasn't one word. Right. You know, and then it, I like it better, obviously. And I, and I totally respect the organization for not changing the name like everybody else when they have Oh, I, I do too. You know what I mean? Yep, I do too. Especially since it was signed for, it was not just taken, it was a contract, it was done out of love and reverence. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, how are your Blackhawks doing this year from this Ranger fan to this Blackhawk fan? Tell me. Well, they could have been better, but to their to to that point, 
I mean, what they have, they had six, seven guys on IR or like, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the worst one that's happened. And it, oh my gosh, it brought me to tears. I watched it. I got ESPN plus on purpose just so I could see right. <laughs> me and my old lady here. We, we watch hockey games. <laughs> right. The, the Siamese is running away because I'm, she thinks somebody else is in the room. So she runs mm-hmm. off. Um, but when um, Connor Bedard, oh, when they signed him, when they announced How great is that? It, I lost it. Uh, and my neighbor across the street texts me and she says, what's going on over there? And why are you screaming? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because there's a, there's a very talented 18 year old. You have no clue. And now we have them. And I just went bananas, right? Uh, and anybody who knows me, I kind of get a little hyper when I talk about certain things. By the way, I think I think Khan has been everything that is advertised oh. and more. I think he's a gamer. He does not take a shift off. And I think he makes the people around him even better. Well, I think when he got his jaw broken in January, yeah. um, part of the reason I was I was shocked as heck. It brought back the year when Alex Todd, who played with the Falcons, got his jaw. I think we were in Long. I think it was Long Beach when we were there. He got he got bad. He got hit bad, and it broke his jaw. And he was he was out for a long, long while because it wasn't just like Connor. Not not to lessen it, but not right. in as many places, you know. Um, but, but as you it, you know, Luke Curtin with the Falcons yeah. had to retire from a broken jaw. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, we both know him very well. He said very that's well. what that's what caused his retirement was the broken jaw. Yeah, and he was Go such ahead. a nice guy. Oh, yeah. the best! You know, yeah. listen, I love, I love, you know, I love the man. I, you know, and yeah. uh, he was part of that All Star game, I think yeah. uh, that, that you mentioned. Um, so back to Connor Bernard and his broken jaw. This is what I love about hockey players specifically. There was no bitching. There was no finger pointing. It was just, it happens. It happens. You just, you just move. Yes. And how he was trying to like, maybe yep. maybe he just thought he got the, the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Yep. And he just wanted to keep going, but he thought, oh, I can't. The, yep. kid, the kid is a pro from get-go. Oh, absolutely. Um, before I move on, I want to talk a little bit about your, uh, I don't even want to say battle with MS as much as you live with it and thrive with it, and that old days are great. Um, talk a little bit about um, the the end of the Falcons, and a little bit about the monsters. And while they're not the same thing, they do fill a nice void. Yeah. Uh, uh, please tell me your, your, your thoughts. Um. Well, I was diagnosed in December '88, and six months after my daughter was born. Um, now, if I, I have to ask, did you feel something? Was it just a shock? Was it... No, um, we lived, we were back living in Southern California mm-hmm. uh, after, well, before my, right before my daughter was born. So we moved back. And when we moved into this um, triplex, it was a two story and the bedrooms were upstairs and, you know, everything else was down. Well, we, Lee and I, and I, I think, my mom and stepfather were gonna go and take our daughter to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And, you know, why, why I stop and think, why was I thinking I wanted to take a barely not even one year old, only six month old child to Disneyland made no sense to me. Because but that's I, what we did back then. <laughs> we did. I was coming down the stairs and I don't know what happened, but I fell and my arm got caught up on the railing mm-hmm. and I was hanging there. And, um, you know, I waddled myself back up and, well, Disneyland was out for the day because I just didn't feel right. And so I just kind of went back upstairs and took a nap. And as I got up the next day, my mother-in-law came over and I guess she pulled my husband to the side and says, you know, there's something wrong with her. She doesn't look right. She's really not talking right. And she's walking bad. He says, "Well, uh, she she pulled a she pulled a DJ, you know. Right. She it, she just slipped down the stairs and kind of got caught up. And uh, she says, okay, well, I'm gonna take her and and the baby. We're gonna go see Grandma. And let me tell you, I loved I well, I still do. She's not with us anymore, but I love my mother-in-law to death. But she lied a lot. 
She told me epidural wasn't going to hurt. BS. <laughs> then she says, well, come on, we'll take, we'll take baby to go play with grandma and you and I will just go shopping. She loved to shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't care so much for it. I wasn't that, I wasn't a girly girl. I didn't care so much. And she lied. We took Jamie to stay with Lee's grandmother. She took me straight to the hospital. This doesn't look like no mall. What are we doing here? <laughs> she says, well, you got to come with me. So I, long, long story short, it was before they had an imaging department at mm -hmm. our hospital. Um, they had to pull, uh, drive in one of those big mobile ones. Mm -hmm. And it took like five or six different CAT scans, MRIs, the whole, the whole gamut they ran on me to where they thought nobody in this town, and I don't know how far, but I was probably one of the youngest people. I was 23 when it hit me. And so um, then when they finally let me out of the hospital, I saw the doctor with my mother-in-law and, and Lee was with me. And, and I said, hey, um, just tell me, is this thing going to kill me? And he says, nah, it'll slow you down. And it, you know, if you were to get, if it, if it could be a complication that, you know, could add to a death. And I said, well, if it ain't going to kill me, I'm fine. I'm gone. Go. And so a year and a half later, we moved back up here. And, you know, then hockey got in, you know. Mm -hmm. So at the same time I did, I, I think I worked till 2001. And then doctor says no more. Right. Well, for the first year, I thought, well, this is kind of cool. I'm going to be a ho Susie homemaker. Yay. Oh, right. I didn't like that very well. Yeah, I didn't, didn't like it that well. Yeah, that does, yeah. Yeah, well, you know me. It doesn't. Yes. Yeah, no. Um, so, I I went and did Valley Public TV. You know our pub. Our, sure. Uh, years ago, at the same time I started hitting the Falcon Games, I got hooked with Valley Public TV, and I was a co-producer for them all eighteen years that I was involved with with the Falcons hockey. Mm -hmm. So I did them both at the same time. I had. The team, I had 12, 14 guys several different times come down to the to the state or to the station and I made them our phone bank. That's when we had live phone mates. Right? Sure. And you know, trying to teach these guys what to say and how to say it, it, it was fun. Mm -hmm. And then I called my daughter because she she's smart. She just right remembered everybody's name of each season. So I called her, I said, okay. I don't know which ones they are, but I got a bunch of them here. And she says, I said, anybody want to talk to my daughter? And the phone right. went all the way around when, we, when they weren't on the camera. And I mean, the friendship, like to this, to this day, Adrian Smith will tell you, he did not know my name for the right. longest time. And he <laughs> did not, he did not realize, you know, well, he didn't recognize it as always being the booster person. He called me Channel 18 Lady. <laughs> well, then again, we know Adrian Smith pretty well, both of us. And that's right. that's that's his, his MO. He's yeah. more of a concept person. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a compliment. That, um, I think was it the last um old old timers game that we had down there? Um who was it? Um I had gotten Adrian's jersey and I had it for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And his son has started to play, right? So yeah. at that last game, I text Smitty and I said, can you bring your son up here, please? I mm -hmm. said, I have something for him. And mm -hmm. apparently there wasn't a dry eye around me when I gave him his dad's jersey. because There shouldn't just, be. That's so wonderful. So, I mean, I have such love for Adrian and his whole family. His They're beautiful whole family. people. They are yeah. beautiful people full of grace. So, uh, you know, the, getting involved with Channel 18 and with the Falcons, and then when the Falcons were no longer, mm -hmm. some of us still bite our tongue. Um, I do too. By the way, I do too. That's good. all I'll say. <laughs> then we had, um, uh, yeah, would we have like a year, maybe a year and a half mm -hmm. until they brought in the, a, a younger group? 
right. which you know they called the monsters. Right. And Jay, J Jay, thank you, thank you, Jay yeah. and his napkin for doing that. I know all over they, the best things happen on napkins. I'm telling you. Yes, them. yes. Dang it, and probably some of the bad things too. But <laughs> some of the um, great things we don't remember happened yeah, with no. napkins. That's all I'll say. And you know we've done it. Yes. <laughs> So the, apparently there was a campaign between Jay Johnson and a couple of the Falcon fans that mm -hmm. now were monster fans. I hadn't gone to a monster game yet mm -hmm. at that point. And there was a campaign to get me to start the booster club. Mm -hmm. Well, really? Lee says, why are you going to do that all over again? That's a lot of work on you. Right. And I said, well, let me do it till I can't. Right. And so I think I did it for three or four years. Mm -hmm. And then I really had to retire because then my MS started to really give me some issues. Sure. So stepping back, knowing when to do it, mm -hmm. because if I didn't do it, I probably would have got clobbered one night and had been hogtied here so I couldn't make it, right? Right. And um, I mean, those were the best days. That I think doing the TV, the Falcons, the Monsters, in that first 23, 24 years that I didn't work really helped keep my mind off of my physical non-ability. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to say disability because it, well, you know, I, yeah. I'm still an energizer, Benny. I don't. You I, really I, are. I don't. Yeah. So it, it really helped. It kept my mind going and kept my mind sharp. And all I kept saying, all I keep playing in my mind is, okay, it's not going to kill you. It's just going to slow you down, period. Yep. And finally, when I said, okay, guys, I'm sorry, but this is it. I can't no more. I really, really can't. Yeah, I got, I got gruff from some of the old timers, you know, you got Glenn and all those guys, you know, the beer league guys that to this but day. Glenn when doesn't age. No. Did you see the picture of them this morning? Yes. Holy Moses, it was wonderful. Yes. But I run into them and they say, hey. I said, don't give me that look because you know I will do it. Don't right. give me that look. <laughs> I, it's yep. an inner struggle battle. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it, it just is. And, and you know, the uh, golf outing every year and oh, all that. Oh, um, yeah. Just the, the great, we, yeah. <laughs> We'll just put a pin in that in, in a good way. Um, yeah. So, you know, the monsters have been around now since uh, what, 2011. They're about 20, uh, 2009, but for quite a while now. And they have a nice niche and selling out, uh, you know, at Gateway. And they, they perform yeah. very well once, twice a year when they play down and sell it, which is nice. I ask this question redundantly to people, but there's a reason why. What is it about hockey live, seeing the game live? For, for me, it was just, sure, you can get excited watching it on the TV or stream mm. it online, whatever. And say a newbie is watching it and, mm. and doesn't really get why, why are you so riled up? You know, you, you know the, the puck is this big. And I said, no, the biscuit's this big. You just got to right. see what you're looking at, right? Yeah. And, but being with other people um, mm -hmm. where you can interact and you don't feel foolish saying, what was that? Yep. You know, yep. why did that? One of the very first games I went to, they pulled the goalie and I was ticked. I said, oh, wait, why are we giving these people a chance to do this to us? Right. I didn't understand, right. you know, but being in the barn with other people, yep. far more intelligent on the game, to mm -hmm. the inexperience, all of us little novice, you know, it, yeah, yeah. you just get that ability and then it just becomes a camaraderie. You've got friends, you've made lifelong friends. You mm -hmm. all sit, you know, then you get one or two and then all of a sudden you got the bud zone. Yep. And, you know, you, it's just, it, it's the thrill, the smells, the sounds. All of it, the chirping. You know, and by the way, these guys can beat the heck out of each other and literally take pictures yeah, after the game with each other because yeah. it's part of the game. Yeah. It is what it is. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a quick change here real quick. I mean, just to prove a point. 
somebody like a Kevin Kaminsky who comes oh, in to coach the monsters, right? Uh -huh. The sweetest guy in the world. Now, this guy was, he knew him from the NHL, vicious, but as you and I both got to know him personally, the nicest guy, bend over backwards. Talk a little bit about that, about not just Kevin, but hockey plays in general. What you see on the ice is real, but it's yeah. just one piece of who they are. Yeah. Yeah, well, because it takes a lot more than just a coach standing there day after day saying, mm -hmm. nope, do that again. Nope. I, I mean, I've seen the coaches go. We're talking from Blair Moore to Glenn mm -hmm. Goldson to you know, Tito to, you know, I mean, and the list just goes on and on. And to watch how they get these kids to do these drills and these yep. kids just soak it up. Yeah. I mean, they're so young they eat breathe sleep mm -hmm. i mean they they go to school that that what six hours seven hours they're in school mm -hmm. if that's how long school is anymore i don't know um yeah, yeah, yeah. believe me i know <laughs> yes that's what i'll say no, but, no, no but, but you can get a guy like gully let's talk about it, or killer or whatever or, or or uh jay when he was coaching yeah I mean, it could have like the worst outcome but that eight-year-old kid wearing the sweater you know, eating a hot dog, comes up for an autograph, they stop and they take a picture and they yeah. smile and they put the, I get emotional about it because it's, it's that important. It is. And I think, I think more of the, the junior hockey and the upbringing that way mm -hmm. should be in more and more of the various, you know, large or not even necessarily larger communities, but you know, you can't yeah. have it in every county, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you're able to get your kid involved in a, in that type of sport, it is, it's a, it's a rough, and, I, and I, I'm amazed by the girls on the team. So, you know, yes. yes, there was, was it, I don't remember if it was San Diego or Long Beach. And this was in the late nineties. They mm -hmm. had a female goalie. There you go. And, and she played at selling. How good is that? For one game. And I thought, Oh, they're going to clobber this poor girl. <laughs> but man, did nope. she stood as tall and as strong and yep. did exactly as her male counterpart. And oh. it's it's understandable how they don't have mixed male and female, you know, mm -hmm. pro teams like that. And it's okay to have that team segregated. I mean, I get that. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that the women play any less harder. Nope. They play just as hard. Mm -hmm. But I don't think, you know, that's just one sport that's kind of difficult to, you know, interject the men and women at the pro level on the same team. You know, as we kind of draw to close a little bit this conversation, we, and we need to do this again. I mentioned earlier how much of a rabid Chicago Blackhawk fan mm -hmm. DJ is. You want proof? Talk a little <laughs> bit about your, your most, your latest ink. Oh Lord. Show yeah. Show everybody your ink and tell them about it. And I don't know if they can really see it so much. Were you able to see it very well? Oh yeah. Okay. So again, going back to my my Blackhawk roots, my Crawford jersey for my 50th, um, mm -hmm. my continued love of them. Uh this guy in Hanford that I absolutely love, uh Daniel Duran down at 98 proof right off of uh Dowdy and um is it seventh and Dowdy, I believe. And sorry, that official plug, Daniel. <laughs> That's all right. We like plugs. He um I, I don't know. I guess maybe if I stood up you'd see it better. So mm -hmm. I told him I wanted a gal sitting on the putts and I wanted to wear a jersey. Well we were just gonna do a basic jersey, but he says, well you got is this a captain? Is this a decision? I said, you know what? I have a I have a Crawford. Let's do number 50. So somewhere on here. No, oh, right on the arm, you'll see the 50. She's got the she's got the Indian feathers. So we did this for a birthday, wrote one of my birthdays about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I went back about four months ago and I got this. So if I go to Spotify with uh, my camera or my mm -hmm. phone and I can scan it. This plays the goal song when the when the Falcons score. The best goal song, by the way, in the NHL. <laughs> hey, there, there. Have you heard the prelude to the to the actual beat? No. Oh, it. You've got go to Spotify and 
you can you can pull it up and it's actually under even if you just pull up Blackhawks goal song mm -hmm. it has all of every team but right. this particular the prelude to the official part that we chant is very interesting to listen to it's a part that I've never heard mm -hmm. and so I really get a kick out of it so even though my boys may and I'm just saying it may be probably not going to make it to the playoffs unless they get the wild card spot. Mm -hmm. But wild card has yet to win a playoff. Mm -hmm. But strange things have happened. You know, some of our guys are coming back. You know, look at Bedard coming back after, you know, almost six weeks off. And right. already had one goal and two points in, in or three, I think, three assists in the two games that he's played. So he's back on track already, you know, and he works so good with Felino and Dickinson. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, it's a little love. So next time the Blackhawks play uh -huh. at Wrigley Field, outdoors, you've got to get there. No, you I must. am. I'm campaigning, and I don't care if I have to beg, borrow, steal. I don't rightly care. Yeah, I'm, I, that's my time. Between the two of us, we know enough people. We'll, you, you, we'll find you tickets. You got to get. You got to go. There. I am telling you, and I told Lee. I says I don't know what you're doing January first, um, twenty five, but my butt's gonna be with like almost eighty thousand people at Wrigley Field. And he looked at me like, "What are you talking about?" I says, "Yeah, I'm not spending. I'm not spending the New Year. You can enjoy your our anniversary home alone by yourself, whatever. Or you can go with me and be with. We can zoom. People. We can zoom." For a minute. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I haven't been to uh, TV Gardens yet to see the Bruins play. Uh, I, I want to do that. I, I'd love to see them play if they play again, Fenway again, because I'm up here, as you know, in Massachusetts now, Cape Cod. Uh, but um, aren't there two um, stadium games today? Yeah, well, they played yesterday. The Jersey Devils beat the Flyers. How cool is this? So they get to the game, right? And all the Flyers come out dressed like Rocky. <laughs> you know, they all come out dressed like Rocky. And then the Devils come out all dressed like the Sopranos. All oh, in the Sergio Tacchini, uh, you know, uh, sweatsuits. Yeah. So I don't know what happens today when my Broadway Blues play the fish sticks of the island. Uh, yeah. We'll see what that what happens there. Um, all the sweet little names that we come up with. Of course. Chirping is part of the game. Exactly. So, so we... On a scale of one to ten, Fresno Falcons that you remember and Slapshot, how, <laughs> how true? Depending on which player you're talking about. <laughs> Pretty accurate. That's what I would say. Uh -huh. um, yep. Junior hockey as portrayed in the movie Youngblood and the Fresno Monsters. Or... The Fresno how Monsters. About, how about the Ducks? Or the how Ducks. About, you know, the, yeah. you know, when they did yeah. the... the yeah, yeah, yeah. And, stuff and, the, and the Monsters, you know? Again, mm. I think more towards the coaches. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, but then, you know, you've got some character players that, you know, you could relate to as well. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, DJ, I got to tell you, thank you for being my guest today. This went way too fast. Yeah. I absolutely love that we've been talking about doing this for too long. Uh, and um, I'm going to rush this on, get this edited, get this out right away. Make sure um, you edit, you know, kind of filter me up. <laughs> oh, stop. You look great. Are you kidding? You know, I got the face from the dark. And uh, you know. Well, this morning but, I was putting on my plaster and everything. And <laughs> Lee's looking at me and he says, where are you going? It's Sunday. And yes. it's your crafting day. What are you doing? Well, I, f I finally agreed to sit down with Darren for a little bit and I haven't done TV in a while. Um, I got to find lipstick. I got, I'm, I'm frantically, he says, you don't, you don't get dressed up anymore. You don't do it anymore. I said, yes, but I'm going to be seen. Yes. <laughs> so I got plastered to hide a lot of my cracks. You will, as usual, shot score. You did a great <laughs> job. And thank you thank so you. much. And uh, you're a great friend. You're a wonderful advocate for hockey, and thank you for what you did for the Falcons and the Monsters and everything else. And we'll talk to you again down the road. I love you. Get this to your family. Will do. Will do. Same to you.
Bye now. All right. I love you. Have a great day. Be well. Thank you.